Hello everyone, it is Circuit 6 and we are back with Episode 4 of Elite Dangerous Basics. This time we're going to cover the different ships and types. We're going to go over what they're good at and what some of them are not so good at. So without wasting any more time, let's take a look at the basic ship that you start with when you start the game. This is the Sidewinder and it comes with two Class 2 hardpoints. It's manufactured by Falk and DeLacy and measures 21 by 12 by 5 meters. In addition to the two Class 2 hardpoints, you have two utility mounts as well as a support tech mount. This will allow you to equip things such as a heat sink or a cargo scanner. With only four cargo units, don't expect to make a lot of money trading. The maximum normal speed of the Sidewinder is 220 meters per second with a 320 meter per second boost speed. The crew capacity of the Sidewinder is limited to just the pilot. And it has a jump range of 7.9 light years when it's completely empty, or 7.2 light years with a completely full cargo bay. The Sidewinder definitely won't outhaul or outgun a majority of the other ships in the game, but at the time of this recording, it can outmaneuver just about every other ship with the exception of the Eagle. When it comes to speed, the Eagle, the Viper, and the Cobra all beat the top speed of the Sidewinder. You can, however, customize the look of your bobblehead. While in combat, it's important to pick your targets carefully. Picking a fight with an eagle or an anaconda may not exactly be the best choice. Since the Sidewinder only comes equipped with two Class II hardpoints, it may take some time to bring down another ship. Once you've taken down your wanted criminal, collect your bounty, rinse, repeat, and save up for a more powerful ship. Once back at the station, we can take our hard-earned credits, trade in our Sidewinder, and purchase the Eagle. The Eagle Mark II is classified as a fighter manufactured by Core Dynamics. The interior alone is a big step up from the Sidewinder. The Eagle drops one utility mount in favor of an additional Class II hardpoint. Two of the hardpoints are located on the belly of the ship. The third hardpoint is located directly above the cockpit. We'll go ahead and outfit this Eagle with two Class II pulse lasers and one Class II missile rack. The maximum hyperspace jump ranges are a little bit less than that of the Sidewinder. Completely empty, the jump range is 6.4 light years. With a full cargo bay, it's 5.9 light years. There is no difference in cargo capacity between the Sidewinder and the Eagle. With a base cost of almost 45,000 credits, you're buying one of the most maneuverable ships in the game. Eagle's maximum speed is 250 meters per second. With boost, it can reach up to 350 meters per second. Equipping your utility mount with a heat sink may not be a bad idea. The Eagle has a tendency to overheat. One of the major advantages to having the Eagle is the maneuverability. You can now be more selective with the targets you want to take down. Here we have no problem taking down a Type 6 transporter. Even though it's trying to get away, we can turn and maneuver fast enough to take him out. Once we've taken his shields completely down, we can launch a few missiles, force him to drop some cargo before finishing him off. Even though the Eagle only has four cargo spaces, targeting transporters may net you some valuable cargo. You can use this in addition to the bounties that you collect to purchase your next ship. The Eagle isn't just good at taking out transporters, it can also take out many other types of ships. We can take out a Viper very easily just by making sure we outmaneuver. Once you've had your fun outmaneuvering and overheating, you can go ahead and trade in your Eagle for a Viper Mark III. The Viper can set you back to a maximum of 122,920 credits, but with a trade-in it can be much less. When it comes to firepower, the Viper is a big step up from the Eagle. It boasts two Class IV hardpoints and two Class II hardpoints. The Viper is classified as a heavy fighter, also manufactured by Falcon DeLacy. It has a crew capacity of 1 and a cargo capacity of 8. Its maximum hyperspace jump range is 11.6 light years, completely empty, and 9.1 light years with a completely full cargo bay. Its maximum normal speed is 320 meters per second, with a boost speed of up to 500 meters per second. So it's very fast and very powerful. We'll go ahead and equip our outer two Class 4 hardpoints with Class 4 pulse lasers, and our top two Class 2 hardpoints with some Class 2 missile racks. At the time of this recording, the Viper is currently the fastest ship in the game, which means if you can't beat them, you can always run. 
Since the Viper does have a heavy armament and has a top speed of 500 meters per second, its heat dissipation is not so great. It also quickly uses most of the available power. So if you want to be a mercenary, smuggler, or bounty hunter, this ship may be for you. While in combat, the Viper's two class 4 hardpoints makes it a lot easier to take out your opponents. Just keep in mind that the maneuverability is about the same as a Sidewinder. The Viper currently has the ability to take out any other class ship in the game, assuming that the pilot has the appropriate level of skill. If you're looking to step up into a larger class of ship, the Cobra Mark III may suit your needs. With a crew capacity of 2 and a total cargo capacity of 36, it's the ideal ship for pirates. The Cobra comes in at a total cost of 172,800 credits and is manufactured by Falcon DeLacy. The Cobra, just like the Viper, has four total hardpoints, two class four and two class two. The ship size, however, is a lot larger. It measures 40 by 20 by five meters. The larger size allows for better heat dissipation and power management. It also allows for an additional utility mount. We'll go ahead and equip this the same way we did the Viper. Two class four pulse lasers and two class two missile wrecks. The maximum normal speed is 280 meters per second with a maximum boost speed of 400 meters per second. In combat, you'll find that the maneuverability is much slower than the other ships. However, the shields are much harder to take down. The power management of this ship means that you can be relentless in your attack. With a larger cargo bay, you can stay out longer and scoop up anything your enemy may happen to drop. If fighting really isn't your thing, or you just want to change, you can always go and do some space trucking. The entry level transporter is the Zorgan Peterson Hauler. Coming in at 68,000 credits, it boasts 16 total cargo capacity. This entry level hauler has a max speed of 200 meters per second with a maximum boost speed of 300 meters per second. It's not going to win any awards for its attack capability as it only has one class 2 hardpoint. The hauler was designed to give pilots a ship with a sizable cargo hold for a relatively low price. Moving up in a class from the hauler is the Lakin 6. The Lakin 6 comes in at 240,000 credits and has a cargo capacity of 100. Manufactured by Lakin Spaceways, the hyperspace jump range is 28.5 light years completely empty or 15.6 light years with a full cargo bay. It has two belly mounted class 2 hardpoints as well as three utility mounts. The utility mounts come in handy, especially when trying to avoid the enemy. While this freighter wasn't really designed for combat, it can hold its own against some lower skilled pilots and some of the lesser class ships. I did manage to take out this Sidewinder relatively easily. The next step up from the Lakin Type 6 is also manufactured by Lakin Spaceways. It is the Lakin Type 9 Heavy. This ship is massive and it is one of the largest ships in the game. It also lets you know you are not driving something small and maneuverable. It is slow and sluggish, but for good reason. The Lakin Type 9's cargo capacity is a whopping 440. It comes in at over 3.5 million credits. With 5 hard points, 3 class 4 and 2 class 2, the Lakin 9 can definitely hold its own against some other ships. It is slow to turn and is easy to kill if you're not careful. The maximum speed is 130 meters per second with a maximum boost speed of 200 meters per second so don't expect to run very far very fast. And that brings us to the largest, most powerful ship in the game. The Anaconda is a freighter manufactured by Falcon DeLacy and will set you back just under 7 million credits. Those 7 million credits go a long way, giving you a three-person cockpit that is not only spacious, but very modern. It is currently the only ship in the game to come with a class eight hardpoint. It also comes with three class six, two class four, and two class two. The class eight hardpoint is mounted on the belly. This ship measures 280 by 60 by 30 meters and has a jump range of 19.5 light years completely empty or 17.5 light years with full cargo. Its maximum speed is 180 meters per second with a maximum boost speed of 240 meters per second. We're going to go ahead and load out the Anaconda with four Class 6 pulse lasers, two Class 4 missile racks, and two Class 2 pulse lasers. 
may take some practice getting this thing in and out of the spaceport. It's quite large, and the height of it is just tall enough to fit through the opening. The Anaconda is truly a multi-role ship. With 228 cargo capacity, it can not only function as a fighter, but also a hauler. In combat, the Anaconda can make short work of Sidewinders, using the Class 6 lasers to take down the Sidewinder shield, and then finishing them off with a few Class 4 missiles. The Anaconda is currently the largest ship in the game and the only one capable of equipping the Class 8 Plasma Accelerator. If you want to buy an Anaconda, the only place you can get it now is in LHS 3262. Well that about does it. I hope you enjoyed the overview of the ships available in Elite Dangerous. Of course this is only for Beta 1.03 and I look forward to seeing you in Episode 5. Take it easy.